There's a great line in your book. You say, page 202, serving as U.S. ambassador in Moscow was my dream job. <laughs> Tell us why. It might not be my dream job today. But okay, right, right. <laughs> you gotta, there's context here. Um, no, I mean, I, I, you know, I had grown up in the Foreign Service. I entered at the height of the Cold War in the early 1980s. I had served there. I had spent, taken basically two years out of my Foreign Service career to learn Russian properly, because um, I was trained as an Arabist, you know, in graduate school, and then, you know, when I first came into the Foreign Service. But I thought, as you did, Mike, that you need to do this right. You can't operate effectively in a place like Russia unless you speak the language well. Um, and so, you know, I had sort of prepared over the course of my Foreign Service career. Moscow in those days was one of the biggest embassies we had in the world. As creepy as the relationship can be, um, Russia's a place that still matters. It's still right. a permanent member of the UN Security Council, still the only other nuclear superpower in the world, um, stretches across 11 time zones. You know, I remember President Obama, whom both of us revere, you know, once said kind of dismissively about Russia that it's just a regional power. And my response, I remember, was, well, it's a pretty goddamn big region. <laughs> um, and, and so, you know, for a diplomat, and, and, you know, especially for a prospective ambassador, it's a place that matters. Um, right. And so that's what I meant. Yep. I'm not sure I would have exactly the same reaction today. 